Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 has been out for almost a year as far as the first betas go and we're soon going to see iOS 18 with all of its new features and hopefully some major changes. However, now that we're on iOS 17.4.1 and iOS 17.5 betas, I thought we'd go over the top 10 best iOS 17 features to make your life a little bit easier. These are things you may have forgot about or maybe you've been using all along. The first one has to do with Safari. And if we go into Safari, depending on what website you're on, if we go to our settings here, we can actually listen to the page. If we don't have time to read something, we can just tap listen to the page and it will start reading. And, AirPods, fall rumors. Everything we know so far. and then we have full control here. We can pause it. We have the speaking rate. We can go back, jump forward or end it all together. This is something I think is really helpful, especially maybe if you're driving, you want to see all of the latest articles, you have the option to do this on just about any website, as long as it's supported. Also, if you're on websites and you don't want to see the actual GIFs or GIFs start automatically playing, you can turn this off as not only does that use a little bit more data, but it also could be pretty annoying, especially maybe if you're at work and you don't want things to just show up on the websites. To turn this off, we go into our settings, go to accessibility, then under motion, we have the option to autoplay animated images. If we turn this off, they'll no longer autoplay and pop up and just start playing whether we're in a meeting or something else. So that's a helpful thing you may want to disable. You can do the same with video previews and of course reduce motion overall if you'd like to. If you've been using iOS for any amount of time, you'll know that once in a while when you're in an app, it will pop up and ask you to rate that app. If that's something you'd never like to see again, you can actually turn that off by going into settings, scroll down to where we have app store and within the app store, scroll down a little bit further and you'll see it says in app ratings and reviews. Just go ahead and turn that off. And it says help developers and other users know what you think by letting them ask for product feedback. This is something that turning it off, you shouldn't get those pop-ups ever again. Now, if you're maybe on a website and you want to type, or maybe you're just searching for something or you're in notes any specific time, and maybe you want to use the keyboard one handed. Many people I think forget about this, go into your keyboard here, press and hold, and you have the option to go into a one handed keyboard. This is something that's been there a little while, but if maybe we want to go to my website, you can just drag and hold and then go there automatically with one hand. If you want to bring it back, just tap the little arrow again, press and hold, or we can bring it to the other side as well. It's just something that makes it a little bit easier to use. If you've only got one hand available to do that, if we go into messages and maybe someone sent you an audio message, so maybe they sent a voice message here using audio. This is a new voice message that I'm sending to myself. And maybe someone has sent you one of these, but you need extra clarification or you need to listen to it again, but you don't want it to expire as they typically disappear. You can have those stay in there forever. If you'd like go into your settings, scroll down to messages under messages, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see it says audio messages. We have expire after two minutes or never, we can switch it to never, and then they never go away. So that's something you may want to use also within messages this year. Of course, they changed this around a little bit, but if we go into our stickers, we can actually create animated stickers. Now you may or may not be familiar with this, but if we tap the plus button here on our stickers and select a live photo, we'll go into it just like this. You can see it's animated and we'll tap add sticker. We could add an effect to it if we'd like, or just leave it as original. And then if we tap on this to maybe add it, you'll see it has a little play button there. And now it's an animated sticker. So you can see that here where it will just animate in sort of loop over and over as long as they have that supported feature within messages. So it's a nice little addition. You can do that with photos of your pets of different objects or anything else. Now, one thing I personally don't use enough that I probably should is when I need to quickly capture a video, maybe we're in the camera instead of just going into video and getting all the settings correct, all you need to do is press and hold, and then it will start capturing a video by pressing and holding on the shutter button. And as soon as I let go, it will stop its recording. And now we have that video. So you'll see it's recording what I just had. And then we have a quick video with our current settings that were available. So that's something that I completely forgets there. It's been there for a while, but it's something that's very useful that I forget to use that I think I should use more often, especially if maybe you're at the lock screen, you need to get in and record something quickly. You could do that again, just by pressing and holding and it will save that video.
Now, when you're in mail, maybe you're using your mail app and someone replies all to an email thread. This can be incredibly annoying and something that just bombards your email inbox with tons of email that you don't really want. There's actually a way around this. So if we go into an email, you'll see here, this is just one that Apple sent, but if we swipe to the right, we've got some options of course, or we could use the same ones at the bottom tap sort of the reply button or the reply arrow and scroll down to where it says mute. Now you can mute the entire thread and anything coming from those specific recipients or anyone else will be muted from now on. If you want to change it, well, we can go back in and then unmute if you'd like to do that, if you want to continue receiving messages. So once they've stopped bombarding everyone with all of those messages, you can turn that back off. Now, whether or not you use Apple maps or not, I definitely recommend it as it's gotten much better, especially in the United States. But there's one thing that I would highly recommend if you haven't done it already, that was added with iOS 17. If we go into maps, you'll see I've searched for Apple park. And if maybe I want directions to this, or I'm traveling to this area and I know I won't have internet connections, or maybe I just want it to load faster. If we scroll up and then we go to more, we have the option to download the map. Downloading the map gives us a snapshot of the area. We can zoom way out and sort of download a huge amount and it tells us the overall size here as well. So we could download most of this area, San Jose, Sacramento, and then just tap download and it will download directly to the phone. So it remembers it. You can do this anywhere where you have maps and it will remember it in memory. You could delete it later on if you want to, but you'll see as I scroll around, it shows different sizes based on how much information is there. So Mexico City city or wherever you'd like to go, download that map and it will be saved and you can use it offline. Now, if you've stuck with me through the video this long, I wanted to help you out with a couple more things that will make your life a little bit easier using shortcuts. A lot of people ask me when you go into the control center, why, when I turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, does it not actually turn it off within the settings? You'll see in Wi-Fi, it's still turned on, even though it's off in the control center. And the same is true with Bluetooth. This is typically to allow you to continue using AirPods or maybe AirDrop or some of those handoff features. But if you want to turn them off completely, whether that be for power saving reasons, or you just don't want it connecting to any Wi-Fi network, you can do that. So let's go ahead and turn those back on. And then I'll walk you through creating a shortcut to easily disable those. So if we go into our shortcuts app, and then we tap the plus in the upper right. Then we go ahead and add an action. We're going to search for the word Wi-Fi. This is actually pretty simple to do. You just want to tap on set Wi-Fi. Then you can tap from on to off. That will make sure it turns it off when you run this action. You can also set other things such as cellular data or Bluetooth as well at the same time, or you could make this separate if you'd like. But if you want to add Bluetooth, just add it and then it will turn them both off at the same time. So we'll go ahead and rename this as well at the top, tap the down arrow, rename, and we'll change it to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off. We'll just name it whatever we'd like, and then we'll tap done. Now, if I go ahead and run this, tap it, it will turn off Wi-Fi. You'll see that in the upper right, Bluetooth is off and they're actually fully off in the control center as well as settings. So you'll see it's off. And again, in Bluetooth, it's off. Now, an easy way to turn these back on is just go into your control center and tap on them and they're back on. You could also create a shortcut to do the exact same thing and turn them back on. But also if you want to make your life a little bit easier with this, go ahead and tap the three dots in the upper right of the shortcut, then use the share button at the bottom, right? Then we can add to home screen. So we have add to home screen here. And then we can change the icon if we'd like. We have a whole connectivity section here. So we'll scroll down to that where it says connectivity. We'll change it to the Wi-Fi symbol, tap add. Then it adds it to our home screen. So now instead of doing anything else, we could also use Siri to enable this. Tap it, it runs, shuts everything off. We want to turn it back on, go back in, it's back on. So you could make this so you could tap it and turn it back on. You can set that, but just if you want to turn things off quickly, tap it, shuts it off. You can do that for just about anything within iOS that's been there for a little while now, but I just thought I'd share that and help you out if you stuck through the video this long. Now, iOS 17 has many more useful features such as using the camera to read labels on maybe clothing or within your car with check engine lights and things like that. So there's many more I've covered them in other videos, but these are the top 10. I think many people forgot about, and I find that I forgot about and need to use more often. 
Let me know if you know any of these features, if you've used any of them, or maybe you use them regularly. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.